Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a completely new time that I'm uploading this because I watched Crisis straight away, Supergirl's episode. I'm going to try and upload this straight away after it has come out. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so later tonight I should have a trailer breakdown and I'll be talking about some more stuff relating to Crisis and what happened in this episode in that video later tonight where my review would normally go up. But I'm attempting to do these Crisis episodes right after they come out because it's so important. It's the biggest crossover event and part one was no exception. It was fucking amazing. I loved it to bits. So let's go ahead and break down I've got so many notes to talk about, so we're going to go through this and talk about the bits that I loved. Honestly, I don't think there was anything that I didn't like, so, you know, 10 out of 10 episode, loved every single bit. It started with an amazing opening intro where we had different shots from, you know, the shows, all the different shows that were incorporated in this crossover episode, and you have the monitor's monologue going over it, and it's really great. I got major chills watching that bit and then we get the different Earth's montage where we get to see Earth X being destroyed I don't know if it actually got destroyed but it kind of looked like you know it was being destroyed but you know the red skies were there the Ray makes a cameo pretty cool to see him back we get to see a version of the detective from 1989 Batman so he makes a cameo in Gotham City on another Earth then we got Holy Crimson Skies as Burt Ward from the 1966 Batman series shouts out into the sky as his version of Gotham is engulfed in red skies. So that was a really great cameo, I loved that. So that ended that and then we get the Titans showing up. So they're not in the classic blue filter which I thought was very funny and at first I actually missed it, it was really quick. But it's confirmed to be Earth 9, San Francisco is where the Titans are. And so we were told that there was going to be a Titans cameo and now it's officially happened. We get to see Hank and also Robin as Earth-9 is engulfed by the Red Skies. I don't think they're going to return but you know it was a very nice cameo just for a short moment. And so then we move on and we have Lila recruiting all the heroes. Some great stuff here, we get a few scenes, we get Barry, he's ready, he's ready for this crisis and when Lila shows up that was a great moment because, you know, he's been preparing and if you watched the last episode of The Flash, the mid-season finale, you saw that he was literally just saying his goodbyes and he's ready to do his mission to essentially die or vanish in crisis. And so also we have Oliver and Mia on Lee and Yu once they get recruited by Lila. So they're coming back to the place where, you know, everything sort of started for Oliver. And so I thought that was great. Then we have the legends, we have Sarah and Ray. I think they're the only legends in this episode, yeah they were, and they were great in this episode, especially Sarah, she has some great scenes which we'll get onto later in the video, but anyway, so yeah, Lila recruits everyone, they all show up to Earth 38 where the Monitor wants them to take their first stand, and so then everything goes to chaos. Kara sees that Argo City is being, or about to be destroyed, and we get like a little scene where on Argo everyone's going crazy just really nice to be back there getting some references back to season 3 of Supergirl which is one of my favorite seasons we have Allura Zor-El showing up which I was just freaking out over and so she helps Clark and Lois save Jonathan but also Clark and Lois are saved but then the city is destroyed Argo City is destroyed and supposedly Allura Zor-El is dead Allura is dead and Argo has gone what about Val and what about all the people that we met on Argo City like I feel really bad and I really think that Kara didn't have enough time in this episode to mourn that because obviously everything's happening so swiftly I really hope that in Supergirl's next episode so the mid-season premiere I really hope she has some time to grieve because otherwise that would be very unrealistic because you know the last piece of Krypton that is left has been destroyed and her fucking mum is dead so she better have some time but I understand why it wasn't in this episode that's not a negative for this episode because you know so much is going on as you can tell from my review so far like so much has happened in like the first five to ten minutes and we're not even like halfway through what we need to talk about and so at one point we see all our heroes that are in the DEO on Earth 38 
they are trying to take their stands, you know, Lila's gathered them all, and we get, like, Batwoman punching Lila, great moment, and, you know, Alex is very, sort of, aggressive, because she doesn't know half of these people, obviously, she recognises Oliver and, you know, Superman and such, and so then they relax, but then you have a massive quantum tower showing up, and so Supergirl's about to stop it, but then you get Barry and everyone, they all arrive via Lila, because they're doing a reconnaissance mission, I guess, like, recruiting some people, or doing some other stuff that we don't know, and, you know, so they show up, and they're like, do not destroy that, because that's the thing that's going to prolong the red skies, as Lila explains what is happening, you know, to do with the anti-monitor and everything like that, and so we don't actually see the anti-monitor in this episode, but we get to find out how he has escaped, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Then we find out that Jonathan Kent, who was obviously on Argo City, he was sent in the pod, and the port got caught in a wormhole, a temporal wormhole, sort of similar to what happened to mon when he went to the future by accident, when he went through that wormhole back at the end of Season 2. So that happens, and he's sent to the future in Star City 2046 on Earth-16. So we've been to 2046 Star City before, it's a little different, Earth-16 Oliver shows up, he fights everyone, and then he sees that it's actually White Canary, it's Sarah who is dead on his Earth. Then he stops attacking them and it turns out he's actually saved and brought Jonathan here because he saw, you know, his pod go down. So then we get some really great moments between Sarah and this version of Oliver. It acts as a really nice moment between them, even if it's not our normal version of Oliver talking. Okay, so then we got Lois, obviously with Brainy, they find out that Jonathan's safe, and they, you know, they're all fine. And then we have, like, various scenes with Alex and Jean, and then Nia and Kelly show up at some point later in the episode. They have a few cool moments. Kelly has Guardian's shield, which I thought was very cool. And so, basically, we try and evacuate Earth-38 via the Daxamite alien ships, but then we get the Legion of Superhero ship, which somehow is back in the past, I don't know how, because mon and Wynn went to the future with it, so maybe they had more than one, although I don't remember them having more than one, but it's just great to see the Legion of Superheroes sort of being brung back into the fold a little bit, considering that Wynn is going to return in a few episodes time after this Supergirl episode. So that was really great, and I really liked those little moments with, you know, big references to the past. Okay, so we get this really kind of nice moment between Clark and Kara outside the DEO, as, you know, everything is kind of safe for now. And so Clark blames himself for wanting a life, and Kara sort of comforts him. So there's various scenes like that that scattered throughout the episode. There is not too much time for them to talk and go over everything in this episode because it's so jam-packed. It's the start of the crossover, and, you know, they've got to kick things off, and things are going off, like, mad right from the start, and it's all crazy. And so, then we move on. we got Barry and Oliver. They have a little chat, which was obviously a great moment. And so, Oliver reveals, actually, what his deal with the Monitor was. And it was to save Barry and Kara, as we all suspected. And so, he reveals that. And, obviously, Barry reveals at first... You know, he's read the newspaper article, he's supposed to die, but Oliver thinks he has saved him, but it turns out he just saved him during the Elseworlds crossover, and so this is a completely new thing. Then he goes to meet the Monitor, and you know, that's when we get a little confrontation between them, as it happens. You know, this happens quite a few times in the episode between Oliver and the Monitor, and so we have Lena showing up for the first time in the crossover towards, like, the midway point in the episode. She's obviously going to help Alex, and so Lena and Alex are there together, and she lies about Eve and her plans, once again, which was kind of funny, and I kind of did laugh, and, you know, she had to drop in a few lines like, you'll never have my friendship again, which is extremely funny, because, you know, she is completely hypocritical, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not saying this is bad for Lena, like, I'm not hating on Lena, it's just, you know, she is definitely down a villainous path, and she's sort of just not accepting that she is in the wrong 
which she most definitely is. And Okay, so then we have some fight scenes throughout this episode. A lot of it is protecting the tower. So the heroes we have there is Supergirl, Green Arrow, Mia, Smoke, The Atom, Batwoman, and Superman all together. They're the main heroes in this episode where they're teaming up and they're trying to stop the Shadow Demons, which are from Crisis in the comics. So nice seeing them. They're kind of, you know, the pretty decent CGI, you know, not the best, but, you know, we can't expect all of that because this is a very CGI-heavy crossover because it's absolutely massive on scale, and I think they've done a great job starting off the crossover. Obviously, Batwoman's coming tomorrow. We're going to be reviewing that because that's part two of the crossover, although I think that Black Lightning is actually showing its link to Crisis, but it's not part of Crisis. So then we move on and we got Green Arrow of Earth-16, like I said, he's old Oliver, he thinks Sarah's dead, she never came back, and so they have some nice moments together. We have the Shadow Demons facing off against our heroes still. Then we go over once again, and this is starting to sound a bit crazy, but it's that crazy in the crossover. We are back to Lena and Alex, they're working together, and so still Lena is acting like a plum and what happens is just after that moment and after we have the Earth-16 stuff with White Canary we have Earth-38 being turned back into red due to the attacks via the Anti-Monitor's army and so the tower is broken down, Supergirl and Superman go up to try and save it so basically their mission is to save the people rather than save the Earth because that is their main priority and so this reigns true throughout the episode until the very end, which we'll get to in a minute. But Superman and Supergirl actually end up falling down, saved by Barry and the Atom. And so it's at that point we have 14 minutes left, they said, until Earth-38 is destroyed. So we see everyone going crazy. Like I said, Kelly's there, Nia's there. They're trying to help get everyone off Earth-38 because it's about to be destroyed. And so that's all happening right on top of all these massive battles. And then... Guess who shows up on the rooftop as they're trying to fight and he pulls away everyone. He makes them go and retreat, that being the monitor, as he says the battle was lost. And Oliver shoots an arrow into him to stop him from saving him and to stop him from going away. And Oliver stands alone as he fights against the shadow demons. And this moment was fucking amazing. I literally was shivering. I was just absolutely floored by that moment and I was just like go get them Oliver go mess them up let's do this and so it was such a great moment I loved that and it was really powerful but then it's revealed Earth 38 is destroyed and they actually got some people off I'm not sure how many people died however they saved three billion people three billion souls and Oliver, due to his sacrifice, saved roughly one billion, which is absolutely nuts and, you know, so admirable that he did this and took his final stand. And so Oliver is dying, which is, which was really, like, a massive shock. Episode one of the crossover, Oliver is dead. He dies. He has this amazing scene with our heroes and with Mia, and it's very touching and really kind of gets to you because you're kind of surprised. And I don't think it had the same emotional impact as it could have because it was, you know, such a great scene before, but then it's kind of rushed because this is episode one. I feel like if it was in the final episode of Crisis, it would be better. Sort of like how Martin Stein died in the crossover a while ago. So it was a great scene. I did feel it, but I felt like maybe they went a bit quickly with Oliver's death. Like, I feel like Oliver's going to return in this crossover. He's not just done this and he's going to leave. Obviously, we might see different versions of him, but I've got this sneaking feeling Earth-1 Oliver is going to be just alright. I'm not sure how, but after Crisis ends, or, you know, we'll see different versions of him, so Steven's in the crossover more. Then we get the reveal, and it's a massive reveal, that Nash Wells is Pariah. Obviously, we knew that via the trailers and via the posters and everything, but it reveals that he actually freed the Anti-Monitor, and that's why he became Pariah. So how did he free him? I'm not sure. Was it that moment that we saw at the end of last week's Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, and, you know, on all the shows? Was that him 
actually making him escape? Or did he make him escape in the past and that's why he's trying to kill the monitor because the monitor is trying to stop him? That's for us to theorise about and I guess we'll get more answers in the next few episodes of Crisis. So everything is doomed and will Oliver return? That's the big question. Oliver died a hero and so wow. What an episode guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers, subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications to not miss tomorrow's video and later tonight I'll have another crisis video out, so thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys later, goodbye. I see red.